from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Radio 2018. Brought to you by VMware. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's special coverage here in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, we're here at VMware's Radio 2018, it's 14th year, it's annual, I won't call it a spring fling, I won't call it the burning man, it's like a sales kickoff for engineers, as Steve Herod, former CTO, <laughs> said on stage. Rajiv Ramaswamy, Chief Operating Officer of VMware Products, uh, one of the groups here. Great to see you, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to be here, John. So Steve Herod kind of coined it, it's like a sales kickoff for engineers, which is like motivating, um, intoxicating, a lot of energy, a lot of good technical buzz going on, people Indeed. are flexing their muscles, Indeed. stretching their minds. Totally. Creating totally. their sparks of innovation. Totally. How totally. do you guys do it? What's the secret sauce? <laughs> yeah, you know, let me take a step back here. Uh, innovation overall at VMware, it's part of the culture. It's not something that is just purely top-down driven. In fact, I don't believe you can simply drive down innovation from the top. It has to come from within. Uh, but what we do at VMware is, culturally, we have several set of activities that we foster uh, that create this culture of innovation. Uh, let me lay out a few examples, of which yeah. of course we'll get to radio and, and why we're here. Uh, but everything from, you start with just tech talks. Anybody, okay, can, you know, can, can bring a group of people together. We have weekly tech talks to talk about anything. There may be stuff that they're working on that they want to get a broader audience for, or there may be stuff that, you know, is far out that they just want to get an audience and uh, communicate. So we have tech talks. Uh, we have uh, our own version of hackathons, we call them borathons. Uh, we run globally at all our sites, you know, our, our 7,000 plus R&D engineers uh, globally. Uh, you know, we run these uh, everywhere. And out of those, by the way, come great ideas. Uh, and uh, these are, you know, typically one to two day kind of uh, events where groups of people get together, they actually build prototypes, they code prototypes. The expectation is they have to show us something working at the end of those uh, two days. And all kinds of cool things have uh, come out of those, uh, right? Uh, the next step there is uh, flings, right? So if you have a prototype and you actually want to get customer feedback and you want to get ecosystem feedback uh, in there, it's not a sanctioned product, but you can go out there and release it uh, and have customers uh, support that and, and, and test it for you. Right? And finally then we have sort of a more incubation type, what we call X-Labs, but it's actually now more of a centrally funded project uh, that, that uh, moves on and, and works on a particular topic. And last but not the least, this event, uh, uh, radio. So the radio is like the, the in, uh, encapsulates like the big tent event, but you're talking about a specific process for innovation. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's organic. So I got to ask you, one of the things I've observed over the, my 19 years living in Palo Alto and nine years covering VMware mm -hmm. and seeing from founding as principles to now is there's two things that jump out at me. Engineering culture. Absolutely. And community. Yeah. These are, have always been kind of like the you know, the nine lives for VMware, you guys have always been leveraging those two things. Right. How do you guys do that going forward? Because as it becomes more competitive, you're bigger now, you got a process. So that's cool, I get that. How do you guys drive the process without fa sacrificing the engineering and the community? So let me tell you one thing that you should keep in mind. All of this is done on people's spare time, right? This is not their day job. Every one of these people, engineers who are here, are doing this separate from their day jobs. And so they are motivated, right? Uh, what prompts people to come to VMware in the first place is the ability to work on interesting, difficult problems, particularly when it comes to infrastructure related. Right? Our, our motto around, our mission is around how software can really change the world. So there's a fundamental driven you know, culture that- The passion engineers want to work yeah. on hard problems, changing right. the world They want to work on hard problems, right? And we foster that, and we encourage them to do that. And, uh, you know, they, you know, they like it, right? And it, it also the fact that yeah. in most cases these are not individuals. Most of these, in fact, almost every paper that you see here is actually a small group of people. And what I'm amazed at is as I look through uh, the work that people do, a lot of the stuff, some of it may be related to what they're actually doing in their day jobs, and uh, there's some subset, but a lot of it is actually you know, stuff that is actually done completely different from what they do. To, uh, and in the, the X day Labs job. is interesting because you have yeah. two tracks, as uh, we heard earlier, there's kind of like continue to incubate it further with some funding while you do your day job, then it's like, oh my God, you know, functions as a service. Let's fast track that, yes. take a break, find someone else, <laughs> you fill your job, That's or right. we'll do it, and you work it full time. That's right, that is a full time job. Once we get to an X-Lab, that is a funded incubation project that you're dedicated to. 
and we allow people to go out, go off and do that, and you know, sometimes it'll be successful, sometimes it won't, and then they can come back. But you got to ask you the engineering question because they, all my engineering yeah. friends, we always talk about this. And you hit the first one, which is, want to work on a company that solves hard problems. Yeah. You guys check. And you've been voted a great place to work across the board, so mm -hmm. great culture, and I can test that the culture's great. The second problem is all the engineers, you know, oh, I didn't get picked, or who made the selection? There's also self-governance going on, so you, the, you have to manage the typical engineering reaction because everyone loves their baby. Yes. Right? So it might not get picked for radio. But you know what, I mean, it's actually- How do you manage that dynamic? So yeah, uh, it's a competitive process, by the way. Uh, and we run radio, let me just talk a little bit about radio right here. We run radio much like any world-class technical conference that uh, ACM would run or IEEE would run. Right? We encourage an open process, uh, where people can submit papers. We encourage, we have a committee that's actually sitting and reviewing these papers. Just like any other technical conference, some of them are going to make it, some of it's them are not a black box it. though. It's not a it's black box, it's a pretty open, transparent feedback. Okay, it's not like, hey, you, you submit something, we throw it over the fence. We actually give feedback. In fact, there's a whole process here. I'll, I'll, so first of all, this year, for example, we had over 1,200 submissions and we picked 200. That's all we can afford. Think about the, the acceptance rate right there. That is on par, if not better than most top-notch technical conferences. So there's a very high bar. Okay, and by the way, the stuff that doesn't get picked can still continue. It's not, yeah. maybe they'll get a, you know, refine it and do better next year. Maybe they'll continue some of it. Or join product. someone else yeah. in the team. Exactly, yeah. You, you allow for people to of course. come together. People can come together and it's completely informal. We don't mandate who comes together, they can come together. And once they get selected, by the way, the other part of this is actually helping the engineers develop as public speakers and presenters also. You know, a lot of us are, you know, engineers particularly like to, you know, sit in their black box, they're sitting out there coding, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah. Here's an opportunity for them to actually go out and present their ideas to a broad forum. And we actually help, part of it is we help coach them and build them into good presenters as well as part of this process. So, for them it's a personal development experience. This competitive dynamic, by the way, is what actually holds up the bar in quality for radio. It actually has no negative barrier. It's not like if you don't get selected this year, there's a bad feeling or anything. You try again next year. It's pride. Just to bring to in it's a new pride just to be year. part of it. Exactly. And, and, and succeeding the bar is a big accomplishment yes. internally. Yes. And frankly, by the way, I mean, yeah, uh, out of these 1,200 submissions or so, you know, in addition to the papers that get accepted here, about 200 of these actually are invention disclosures that fi eventually find their ways into patents yeah. over time too. Yeah. So there's other ways these things get moved forward. There's a social benefit, also a personal benefit to grow. Absolutely. And you get the patent And option. the networking that comes here, right? The most important part, I don't know if you saw the poster session yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the energy in the room yeah. is just phenomenal. Yeah. You have people out there who are really passionate about talking about their work and there's people out there wandering and you meet new people. Uh, in fact, for me, in my role, what I enjoy the most uh, is, of course, yeah. getting to hear what these guys are doing, but also helping them make connections. Yeah. You know, because I sort of look at all of R&D, and then, okay, somebody here is doing something, uh, uh, in, a, in fact, I'll give you an example. There's somebody who's figuring out how to do, yeah, the, the topic was called teleportation, but it really was about fast data movement, right? Uh, uh, and, so, and so this was a team in our core virtualization platform. And then I, I said, okay, hey, there's another team there that's focused on hybrid connectivity. You guys should connect, because they're actually building a product that could leverage what you do. Yeah. So you make those informal connections here, and then off they run. You know, it's interesting, Ray O'Farrell and I were talking about the confluence of these markets coming together. You guys started out in a data center, you get cloud, AI now, mm -hmm. which is big data, and now blockchain. Um, really interesting stuff I, you guys are doing with blockchain. We're talking off camera, and I have talked with some of your folks. You guys are already kind of eyeing that wave pretty yes. heavily, and I know there's work going on there. But in the intersection of infrastructure, AI, cloud, and blockchain, and decentralized applications, is a lot of really important stuff. This is the confluence. This is the this is the where it all has to mash together. The mashup yes. of and security, IoT, and data. Yeah. Not big data or AI. Data hits everything. That's right. Yes. Security hits everything. IoT's hitting everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have to tweak your R&D focus? Uh, how do you guys manage that, these uh, changing confluences? Yeah, so look, we are constantly adapting and evolving what we do. It's never static. Uh, I'll give you an example from uh, recent times. Right? So when we got into networking, we pioneered the concept of software-defined networking. Uh, and we came out and initially it was all about a data center, right? It was about how do we you know, do connect and secure applications inside data centers. And then we saw the world changing, right? Applications are moving out to the public cloud. And then more recently, applications are moving to the edge, to your earlier point. And so what did we do? Well, we took that networking vision, we expanded it mm -hmm. to now include public clouds, include the edge. And that's what we just launched uh, recently. 
So that's an area where you know, things are dynamic, our innovation moves on. As I do believe the edge is going to be one of the next big areas of investment and opportunity, mm -hmm. and security is pervasive across the board. So our vision now encompasses security everywhere, right? All yeah. the way from your mobile device to the edge, to, and branch offices to the public cloud and to your data centers. Anywhere where you have applications running, data sitting, and users, you've got to secure that. What's the big waves? Pat Kelsey is going to come on soon. He always talks about the waves of innovation. If you're not out in front of the next wave, you're Driftwood, his famous quote on theCUBE years ago. You've got to pick the big waves. Obviously, you see blockchain, that's a great call. Cloud, no brainer, you're there. Data center, you've been there, entrenched. You've got AI, I know you guys are working on stuff. Are those the waves you're on? Is there a new wave that uh, no one's seeing? And, how do you guys I think, look I think at in that? General, I mean, look, I mean, of course, it's all adjacent, right? Edge computing is adjacent to what we do and IoT, so that's obviously a big area for us. Uh, telcos, uh, you know, for us, you may not necessarily think of it as innovation, but they are actually rejiggering how they do their entire infrastructure, and that's a great opportunity for us, right? So, at, at the end of the day, there's two things, right? We have innovation, yeah. and then innovation correlated to also to what markets we can go after that are new and can drive incremental business for us. And so the Edge and Telco, in our view, are yeah. two big, big opportunities for us. You guys are doing a great job. World-class organization, it's fun to watch. It's a pleasure to uh, interview such great, smart people here. Rajiv, you're one of leading the team. My final question I want to ask you for the folks watching who don't work at VMware. Describe what it's like to work here. What's the DNA of the culture? Um, explain the dynamic, because you have, it's like a kid in a candy story if you're an engineer. Yeah. To explain what's going on. Look, I mean, the thing that I'm, I continue to be impressed by here, and I've been here uh, two and a half years, right? is the quality and depth of the engineering talent that we have and the willingness to work on difficult and interesting problems. And also share that across the board, right? There is no sort of, it's very rare that we have people sitting isolated that go off and do something. People are willing to share, we work as a community together. So that really, really stands out. I've worked in many companies and I have to say, no other company really creates this kind of a culture of innovation where we bring all these people together. This event radio is absolutely unique. I have not really seen it at this scale yeah. anywhere else. It's a great use case of world class in, in a modern era. Yeah. I think you guys have the secret engineering and community focus has I mean, been a key backbone for The other guys. thing, by the way, I would say is engineers feel that their ideas are valued and they're actually used. Something that starts out you know, in a very small way actually could end up becoming pretty, getting a lot of visibility. I'll give you an example. Out of a Borathon uh, last year or so, somebody came up with the idea of using a, a virtual reality headset to figure out how you can actually manage your entire data center using virtual reality <laughs> and pick in place. That's great for working at home. <laughs> cool, right? <laughs> it was cool, it just came out of a two day you know, hackathon session. And what did we do with that? Well, we did, we did that, I took that and made it a demo, set the stage at VMworld, at all our V forums that we run across the world. And all of us, by the way, Pat, myself, we were all sitting out there doing virtual reality demos built on that, yeah. what a couple of engineers yeah. had done in two days. Great visibility. Now, that's not going to go into a product anytime soon, I think, but. Yeah. but it's, hey, a it's a cultural example thing, right? of grassroots innovation, right. sparks of innovation can come from anywhere. That's right. And Rajiv, some of the stuff, yeah. Thanks great. for coming on, appreciate it. This is theCUBE's coverage here in San Francisco for Radio 2018, it's 14th year annual events, turning into quite the showcase for flexing and also stretching the minds of the smartest people in VMware. Of course, theCUBE's here on the ground. I'm John Furrier, back with more coverage after this break. Stay with us. Thanks.